Hello everyone, this is Nick, and today I'd just like to kind of demonstrate what it is I've been doing this summer. So, I've kind of been interested in this thing called hierarchical temporal memory, and uh, what, what it is is a machine learning algorithm that is based off of research gleaned from uh, uh, the structure of the human brain, uh, neuro neurological research, and um, more specifically how the neocortex functions. Uh, so I have a little diagram that I've made up here, and this is a um, company that's been mostly doing most of the leading research in this area is Numenta, when they have their um, the new pick project and their product called Grok, and uh, you might want to look into that if you're interested. But this is, to the best of my understanding, how their core system kind of functions. And um, I'll uh, I'll kind of highlight these areas here, but I won't go too in depth because uh, just to keep the video short. Um, at the bottom here we have our input data and this can be really anything like um, integers, floats, uh, booleans, uh, enumerations uh, as long, and as long as you have an encoder for it you can do stuff like dates and times and temperatures so the input data is then encoded and it's encoded into a representation of zeros and ones and the spatial pooler takes these ones and what the spa what the spatial pooler does is it tries to ensure that similar looking inputs have a similar kind of in of representation internally in the uh, spatial memory and uh, with the research I've done so far in my own implementation of uh, this, uh, I have found that this does do a great job of uh, decreasing the amount of noise that you get. Um, so moving on, the temporal pooler. Uh, this is uh, this is structured. Uh, it's made up of columns, and in those columns are cells. And what the temporal pooler is. Uh, it's it's a spatial memory. It uh, it's what stores the patterns and it what's and it is what makes the predictions. Uh, above here we have the CLA classifier, and the CLA classifier is a little bit different from the rest of these objects here. Um, the CLA uh, the, these other objects down here, uh, the spatial pooler and the temporal pooler are based off of neurological research. The CLA on the other hand is uh, an add-on that is uh, the main purpose uh, of it to the best of my knowledge is for multi-step prediction. See when you're using the temporal pooler uh, it can only make one prediction into the future, one step into the future. Uh, what the CLA does is it collects statistics based on the cells and everything and using that it can make um, predictions that are you know five steps in the future or 10 or 20 or 50. Um, for the purposes of my project I'm going to focus on these down here. Uh, I'm not going to do the CLA uh, uh, partially because I, I don't need multi-step prediction for the the plans I uh, for what I want to use this for, but perhaps in the future I'll, I'll figure out a way to figure out multi-step prediction. So currently in my project I'm, I've completed the temporal pooler and I've completed the spatial pooler. Uh, the next step then is now to write the code that handles the uh, data encoding. Right now I'm just manually setting these input bits here and uh, in the future I want to be able to uh, uh, have that more easily done so this can be used in, uh, in a, a more real-world use case. 
Um, so with that out of the way, uh, let's get to a demo of what I've been uh, got accomplished so far. So for the demo here, I have three different types of streaming data I want to show you. First one is a sine wave. And so this is kind of what it's going to look like. There. And you want to go down and predict this. So there we go. And now we see it running and it's it's looking at the sine wave and and predicting it now. And so we're going to cut it off pretty soon here. About right here, this should do it. Okay, so we're kind of see what's going on here. So let me explain this. The dot is the value at the current time step. So the uh, algorithm will take a look at that, and based on its what it's learned from the past, it will make a prediction about the future. So it makes a prediction right here, signified by the P's here. And so you look down and yep, it's right, pretty close. And it does that along the way. And an X is, uh, it, it, it's when a, a P and a dot line up. And so for readability's sake, I've put those there. So it's the current value and it's also predicted. So I've noticed a little bit that it, it tends to do a better job on large changes like this as opposed to smaller changes. It's less accurate, um, like around here. So around these areas, it tends to be a little bit less accurate. But it, yeah, you can see it kind of follows the sign uh, one step ahead of it. And uh, every once in a while you get times when you have no predictions and I'm looking into f finding out r reasons for why those that happens and try to prevent that. And you also get uh, a time when uh, it predicts in the wrong direction. So right now it's got that one right, but it's also added this prediction here and it's saying it's going to go this way. And the reason it does that is because the cell that's learning this direction is also learning this direction. So it gets it right, but don't, but it uh, it doesn't get it. It's also predicting that side, and it shouldn't. Those, those are more a matter of just more time, and it'll get it right, correct. So I'm fairly happy with how this looks. So now move on to the next one, and that is a summed sine wave prediction. So it looks like this. I'm taking two sine waves and adding them together. And so we have one sine wave that makes these small little waves here. And we have a bigger sine wave that is this, like that. There we go. And this is going to be a little bit more difficult to follow. So it also takes longer to learn. So I'll run this. And I'll keep it running in the background. Hopefully my screencasting software won't explode. <laughs> but uh, I'll put that over here. And I have an example of it all done already. And actually, I'll, I'll just quit out of this one because I'll just explain it on this one. Um, so same rules apply here. This looks a little bit more chaotic. And you get weird areas where it's like it's making all these huge like line of predictions. It's like, what? But... Um, so I, I need to figure out ways to combat combat noise uh, because there's times when, uh, like here, there's 
at making several predictions where this one's right, but it's got these over here that are kind of, uh, that aren't correct, false positives. Um, so, uh, so combating noise is an issue. Uh, but even so, like in cases where this happens right here, there, this might look messy, but I think if using, if I parse it in a, in a intelligent way, I can still get usable data out of this. Like for example, these are made up of, uh, several groups. There's a group of two, group of one, group of three, group of two, and a group of five here. If I take the largest group and take the average of the values in there, and so right about there, that's actually pretty close to the correct answer. So there's a lot of cases where that won't work, but in a lot of cases that will work. So like here again, I could just cut that in half and it'll work. Um, and close enough is good enough in this case. I think this would work here too, largest group there, and it'd be close, close enough. So you could uh, uh, um, get usable, close enough data out of this. Um, it's just some stats at the end. Uh, I, I could, I'm not going to go over what they mean right now, but um, maybe in a future video. This is mostly for my own debugging purposes. And uh, we have one more thing I want to run right now. And <laughs> this is an interesting experiment. The random number prediction is uh, I just, <laughs> uh, I'm using the standard C pseudo random number generator, just putting random numbers into it. And, uh, you know, seeing, because, you know, maybe I'll find a pattern and can break cryptography. Uh, might I have a chance, but <laughs> so, um, but as you can see, as time goes on, you, you might be able to tell your predictions just tend to fill up evenly across it here. And if I, I could let it run for, you know, a long, long time, but the result is almost always the same. And I'll just cut it off and show you. Uh, it hardly ever gets the predictions right. Uh, occasionally get lucky and coincidence prevails, but uh, it either makes no prediction or the predictions it makes are always wrong, not even close. Uh, and that's expected because it's uh, uh, random numbers. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. And uh, if you'd like to see the source code, here's one of the files. But the whole thing is open source, so if you want to see all of it, you can go to my GitHub, and I'll include a link to that in the description, along with, uh, I'll also put some links to more information about Numenta and uh, the stuff they're working on, and just more stuff about HTM technology in general in case you're curious. So uh, uh, thank you if you're if you're still watching. Thank you for making it this far and I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions go ahead and leave them for me in the comments below and uh, if you have any advice uh, uh, anything I, you think I should do with this uh, or uh, any ways to help fix the problems I'm having uh, feel free to throw them on in there and I'll give them a read and and that's that so thank you goodbye